Hey everyone, Dean from Protocase's Design Services team here with something a little different. This video is going to be our first Protocase Designer Pro tip. We're going to go in depth on different techniques you can use on common topics designer users ask us about. Today I'm going to show all the tips I have about making ventilation patterns in Protocase Designer. We often get questions about making custom vent patterns, so I'm going to show how to make them quickly and easily, then show off some ways to create custom shapes. So if you want to see how to quickly create some unique vent patterns that will make your design look amazing, you have came to the right place. First, I'm going to start with creating a simple slot. The easiest way to create one is by clicking on the rectangle tool, then clicking and dragging to draw it. Once I have my rectangle placed, I'm going to customize it by using the properties panel on the right side. First, I'll adjust the height and width to my desired size. For the example here, I'll use a height of 250 thou and a width of an inch and a half. I'll round the corners using the option here, using a corner rad of 124 thou. Using the exact height value would remove the line entirely, so use a value of 1 thou less to avoid this. Now I have a single slot in the perfect size. So the next step is to create a vent pattern using the slot I just created. There's multiple ways to achieve this in Designer. So here I'm going to show you the fastest way to create a standard rectangular vent pattern. I click on the cutout I just created, then click the Pattern tool. Here I'll select Linear and change the angle to 0, the spacing to 1.75 inches, and the quantity to 5. I then click Create to place a strip of my slots across. Now I'm going to copy the group and place it several times to create my ventilation pattern. Here I'll use the distribute tool to get equal spacing between them. Distribute them vertically and distribute the space between. If you want to save this for later, you can group the entire pattern and add it to your personal library. You could also use a linear pattern here of the pattern you just created if you wanted a more standard one. For example, I'll pattern the original strip using a value of 90 for the angle, spacing of half an inch, and a quantity of 5. Now, what if I want to spice up this pattern a bit? First, I'll create a staggered pattern, or simply a pattern that skips certain instances. The easiest way to do this is to right-click on the pattern you just created and choose Ungroup. Now you can then select the slots you want to remove by either window selecting, or selecting by holding in the shift key like earlier and then clicking the delete key on your keyboard. Doesn't get much easier than that. Feel like adding some flair? Here's an easy way to do that. Create a single slot similar to what I described above and copy paste a second instance of that slot. I'll use the alignment tool to get them aligned with one another and now change the second slot to have a width of half the original one. 750 thou to be exact. I now create a pattern of these using an angle of 0, a spacing of 2.75 inches, and a quantity of 3, just as an example. Keep in mind that if you enter the wrong values at any point, you can easily click on the pattern you created and update the values in the sidebar to your desired ones. I'll take this group and place it approximately where I want it to be, making four rows since this is what I want for my pattern. Using distribute vertically to have them equally spaced, I end up with something that is a bit more distinct. And now I'll ungroup these to, and delete the instances I don't want in my pattern, group the finished product, and add this to my personal library for future use. As you can see, after saving this pattern to your library and saving the face you just edited, you can now use the quick search function to search for what you named it and place it quickly and easily on later designs. You don't need to use just regular old rectangular slots for the custom cutouts in your vent pattern. You can apply that process we showed you to circles, ellipses, or even creating your own custom shapes like hexagons or triangles. Another tip for creating cool custom vent patterns is using the circular mode of the pattern tool. I'm going to create a custom hexagon cutout. I'll create one rectangle to the height that I desire each of the hexagon sides to be. Here I'll use 250 thou width and 125 thou height. Now I'll copy and paste it. Rotate the ones I need by 120 degrees. 
and use the measure tool to precisely place each in the desired position. I then merge them into one instance by right-clicking and selecting Merge, and now I have a custom hexagon as mentioned. Now I'm going to add my hexagon to my personal library so I can use it in the future. With that finished, I click on the Pattern tool and select Circular. Don't be too concerned about the values here as you can adjust them on the sidebar afterwards. With my circular hexagon pattern finished, I'm going to create one final vent pattern using triangular cutouts. Now I'll create a triangular cutout using the same process I used for the hexagon. First off, what I do is draw three rectangles. Using rotation and the measure tool, I'll get the shapes overlaid the way that I want them. So using the methods I used before, I'm going to create a triangle so I can create a vent pattern with it. I'll then take this triangle, flip it by 180 degrees. Using rotation and the measure tool, I'll get the shapes overlaid the way that I want them. Now I'm going to copy it, flip it, and create some patterns. Thanks for watching our first Designer Pro tip video. If you have any questions about Designer, email us at infoprotocase.com. Download the latest version of Protocase Designer by visiting its website, and find out more about Protocase by visiting that website. Links to both in the description below. See you back next week for a new Proto Tech Tip.